Hey, Cryptozens. Tonight's show, FedNow, is it a CBDC killer? It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is August 30th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. U.S. Federal Reserve Banks have been working on something called the FedNow Service. This is intended to create a nationwide instant payment service for use by financial institutions, regardless of size or location. And this is the important part, round the clock, 24-7, 365. Are you excited yet? Well, how about this? What it means is that businesses and individuals will be able to send and receive payments any time of day, any day of the week. There's no settling period. You don't have to wait three days for a check to clear or anything like that. Immediate access to your money. And this could really help for anyone who has time-sensitive payments that they've got to make. Now, this will be accomplished through something called the Federal Reserve's FedLine Network. This network includes more than 10,000 financial institutions. Lael Brainerd is the vice chair of the Federal Reserve, and she announced that FedNow, they're looking at launching somewhere between May and July next year. This announcement was made at the same time as the FedNow pilot program enters technical testing starting this coming September. This information comes to us from an early adopter workshop in Rosemont, Illinois. During her remarks, Brainerd made it clear that it's going to depend on the financial institutions and software providers. They're going to have to update their systems to accommodate FedNow's launch. Brainerd said, quote, The time is now for all key stakeholders, financial institutions, core service providers, software companies, and application developers, to devote the resources necessary to support instant payments. She's continued. The shift to real-time payment infrastructure requires a focused effort, but the shift is inevitable. As I mentioned, this was at an early adopter workshop. Things like that and the FedNow Explorer resource and the pilot program I was talking about, they're all expected to increase participation in the process. That said, I don't think you're going to have to work too hard to convince a lot of companies to participate. At present, there are over 120 organizations involved in the pilot program. This includes U.S. Bank, Exchange Bank, Alacrity Payments, and Modus Box. Even so, participation in the FedNow pilot program means going through a certification process. They're doing this to make sure that all the companies meet the operational requirements before launch. In the meantime, the Fed will reach out to companies that weren't in the pilot but are still interested in using the service. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $974 billion. That's down 0.61%. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 1.35%, Ethereum up 0.53%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin down 0.32%. Esther George is president and CEO of the Kansas City Federal Reserve Bank. She's also the executive sponsor of the FedNow project. In the announcement, she said, quote, Today, with the FedNow launch date in sight, we are pleased with the collaboration and dedication our pilot participants have brought to advance modern payments in America. So for her part, Brainerd noted that this is built in the cloud, which is good. That means the system can scale without losing any resiliency. It'll be robust and broad geographic coverage and speedy systems side by side, even in remote regions. So, Nicodemus, you might be asking, so what? Why are you so excited and why should I care? Anybody who's listened to this show for a while knows I am no fan of CDBCs. I see them as controlling, invasive, and a government tool. This can make developing a CDBC unnecessary. That's why I'm excited by it. Michelle Bauman is a Federal Reserve Governor. On August 17th, she said FedNow, quote, addresses the issues that some have raised about the need for a CDBC. 
and beyond that. Brainerd's comments this May, she was speaking at a hearing at the House of Representatives Committee on Financial Services. This meeting was discussing the benefits and potential issues of a hypothetical CDBC. She said, quote, Congress were to decide to issue a CDBC, it would take five years to put in place the requisite security features, the design features. Now, a couple things to consider on this point. One, Chair Powell has made it clear. He had said that the Fed would advise Congress on how a CDBC could be implemented. And he was clear, though, he was not taking the initiative on it. He said that direction would come from the White House and Congress. That said, May of last year, he was speaking on the topic of CDBCs. He said, quote, we think it's impossible that any CDBC could serve as a component to and not a replacement of cash and current private sector digital forms of the dollar, such as deposits at commercial banks. And now back to comments from Brainerd, because she pointed out, quote, it will be important for the FedNow service to be interoperable with the private sector instant payment service to accomplish the goal of nationwide reach of instant payments. Also, it seems like the system is going to be cheap. 25 bucks a month per routing number. And the sender pays the transaction fees. That's going to be four and a half cents each. Returns would work the same way. Now, there's a default transaction limit of $100,000, and that can be increased up to a half million. Brainerd said, quote, having the capacity to manage money in real time could help households avoid costly late payment fees or free up working capital for small businesses to financial growth. Indeed, during the pandemic, we witnessed how essential rapid access to funds can be as many households started spending emergency relief payments on the day they were received. So this Fed now thing has been in the works for a decade. You can see now that one of the things that giving this a lot of traction was COVID. There was a strong need to get stimulus money in the hands of U.S. citizens. And I remember people were talking about CDBCs back then that a CDBC was necessary to make those kinds of payments directly to citizens. And I get why they say that. It was a big old mess. They sent out these cards with money on them. Now, how much did just sending out the cards cost? And how much did they have to pony up for those fees and transactions? And still, it took weeks. And some people didn't get theirs because reasons. U.S. mail didn't deliver it, or we didn't have a good address for them, or it was stolen. All of those would be resolved by this kind of system. I remember that they were talking about how they didn't have a way to get money out to people and that that needed to change. Now, with FedNow, you don't need a CBC to do that. It's not a blockchain project. It's not a CDBC. That said, it does require a lot of coordination with third parties to make this work, which is why Brainerd was saying that this is going to depend a lot on third-party partners. She said, quote, We have been working hard to deliver on time. But ultimately, the number of American businesses and households that are able to access payments will depend on financial services providers making the necessary investments to upgrade our payments infrastructure. And remember this too. Brainerd said that coming out with the CDBC would take five years. FedNow is due out next year. So clearly, FedNow isn't dependent on the CDBC to work. In fact, FedNow doesn't care about the blockchain at all. The global NFT market cap is up 13.46%. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Moonbirds, followed by ABC Virtual Expedition, Moonbirds Oddities, Clonex, and Bored Apes. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices. So do your own research. So if this whole FedNow thing works, it changes the game. I'm going to guess here that all these services are going to have to be interoperable. That means it doesn't matter which app your friends or family use. If that is true, that opens up a lot of avenues, either direct or indirect, to use crypto as currency. So think about Cash App. You can buy and sell Bitcoin on Cash App. And if they hook the Cash App system to FedNow, that should mean the use of crypto as currency, even if only unofficially. To be clear, it's not going to be settled in Bitcoin. 
It would likely be converted to US dollars and then transferred from Cash App to wherever. Now you can send Bitcoin and receive Bitcoin now in Cash App, but only if they accept Cash App. You can't pay your rent with Cash App unless your landlord specifically takes money through Cash App. It shouldn't matter whether you use Zelle or Cash App or whatever. And consider crypto banks. We reported earlier just this month, the Federal Reserve announced their final system for granting crypto banks access to the banking system. Remember, we talked about that there was a three-tier system, one for federally insured applicants, and then tier two is for federally insured applicants that are subject to supervision. And the third one is for cap applicants that are, quote, not federally insured and not subject to prudential supervision by a federal banking agency. Right. So that scheme means that crypto banks will no longer require partnerships with traditional banks. It means their financial systems will be opened up. And it seems like the Federal Reserve, I'm going to give them a modicum of deserved praise here. Their FedNow system, it looks to me to be pretty good. 24-7, 365 access is good. Instant settling is good. Low transaction fees are good. Opening up the stream of money to include more and various on-ramps and off-ramps is good. It gives people an important choice how to send their money, and how to receive it. And it is now time to say goodbye for another evening. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. Take care of yourselves, but take care of each other too. We'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs>